What's up everybody, welcome to the Ride and Dad channel. And as the thumbnail suggests, we're gonna fix the stock clutch that's on this Grom. Now there's a bunch of things you can do. This specific video, as you could probably guess from the pictures and the title, we're gonna be replacing the lifter plate and the springs. Pretty easy, but also fairly in depth at the same time. I'll explain what we're gonna do and do it step by step. But first, let's roll that intro. Yep, so this is my 2020 Honda Grom. Uh, today, we're going to be taking this whole right side of the bike fairings and covers off. That means we have to take the seat off first. Then there's a couple bolts, I'm sorry, a couple screws and everything that hold this kind of one piece together. We'll take all that off, set it off aside. We're going to have to remove uh, the clutch cable and some other stuff. I'll, I'll show you obviously when I'm doing it. Remove this whole cover and then we're going to be taking off the original clutch, the whole basket and everything, uh, going to be replacing the stock springs with some 80% stiffer springs that I got, uh, and then replacing, like I said, that lifter plate. You'll see when I get in there, I'll touch on it again, but there's six stock uh, holes and only three screws in the assembly for it that holds that basket together. So what we're gonna do is tap out the other three holes that are drilled out, not tapped already. I bought some extra screws, some actual grade eight screws. We're gonna replace all of the screws in there with some grade eight. Um, so we're gonna have six screws instead of three screws that come stock, as well as 80% stiffer springs versus the stock springs that went in there. So like I said, there's a bunch of stuff you could do. You can get a whole new basket. You can get all new uh, plates for the actual clutch assembly, the actual rings but we're just keeping it pretty simple. It's a fairly new bike, so even though there's a decent amount of wear and tear with what I've been doing with this, uh, on the stock clutch uh, plates and everything, putting the 80% springs in there and doing this modification to it should really help uh, the clutch not slip a lot and also be prepared to accept what I got coming up next for the Honda Grom. So let's get this off, get that off, and I'll walk you through it after I get all this. Uh, side note, if you're going to drop all the oil out of it, go ahead. I'm not yet. I have some other stuff going on that I want to, I don't want to waste oil twice. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a moving blanket on the ground, flip this whole thing over on its side, uh, and then keep the oil away from dripping out when I remove that cover. So let's get started. So this is just a kind of brief overview, just taking off some of the screws and the bolts and everything that keep that right side panel on. And you don't really have to take this whole piece off, but it does make it easier to get to certain parts of it and also makes it easier for what I'm going to do in the future. So that's why I went ahead and did it, but you don't necessarily need to if you're just messing with the clutch. And some of these Phillips head screws are so tight, I was so worried I was going to wind up stripping them, but as long as you put a lot of pressure in there, I think you'll be okay. some of these just kind of pop in and out screws. I don't even, just they're plastic tabs basically, they're not actual screws. And then at the very end you'll see to take the whole side off if you do that, there's like a little tab that fits in from the fairing to the bike. So make sure that you pull up instead of just trying to yank it straight off. Before we take the whole clutch cover off, you're gonna need to take the clutch cable out of the actual clutch mechanism. Then I'm gonna to start to just break every one of these bolts loose and then eventually just completely unscrew them. Uh, if you want to take uh, tabs of, you know, which is which and put it all back, kudos, but I did not. They're all the same size, so with the exception of the ones that have specific mounting spots on them, which I left and noted where they were, they're all the same size. It's a very small 
engine, very light amount of work that it's putting out. So I really wouldn't worry too much about making sure that these are in crazy same order and everything like that. And you'll also see in, in most of my videos like this, where it's not a super in-depth like interior engine kind of thing. I don't ever do torque specs. I've had bad experience with torque specs posted in manuals where I've actually broken bolts with not even getting to what the manufactured torque spec was. So I don't do any of that. I just kind of do it based on uh, feel and I've never had any issues so far. But again, you know, to each his own. I don't want to be responsible for your stuff, so <laughs> up to you. Also, make sure that you unscrew that dipstick um, before you take that out. Next is going to be the oil spinner. First, you're going to remove these three bolts. And then you'll need this special tool that Honda sells. It's for the clutch and spinner removal. So you'll have to remove the actual spinner nut first. And then the whole spinner removes from the spindle that it sits on. And here I'm just draining some of the oil from it because some got collected in there, making sure that I make as little of a mess as possible. Next, remove the two bolts from this kind of half bowl cup shape uh, that sits underneath the clutch. That will need to go in and out of the actual bike uh, with the clutch. They need to be as a pair when removing or putting the clutch back in. Then you're gonna take the three bolts out of the stock lifter plate. Uh, be careful that you try to do it as even as possible. These are the stock springs, so I wasn't too worried about it. Just try to make sure you're not putting too much pressure on one of those screws more than the other. Do take that bearing out of there and place it in the freezer until we're going to be ready for it. And then by using an impact drill for this kind of stuff, it limits having to hold it and make sure that the rear wheel is locked up and all that stuff as well. So again, use the spinner and clutch removal tool to remove the bolt for the actual clutch. And like I said, you're going to remove the pair, that bowl with the clutch at the same time. Once you got the whole clutch uh, basket out, take the old springs out of it because those are trash and we are no longer using that. You're gonna also wanna separate the actual basket from the plates. Be careful to note any washers where they are and make sure that they stay where they are supposed to be and remove that bottom plate from the top plate with all the clutch rings. If you look at this bottom plate, you'll see that three holes are completely uh, drilled out and uh, you could see through them and they also have threads and then three are not threaded. And now is the part where we tap the three that are not threaded. The tap link is going to be in the description. So if you're curious exactly which one it is, go ahead and check that out. And then I'm just gonna use a little WD-40, uh, one for a lubrication for the threading, and then also to clean off that tap. And just gonna go real slowly, only two or three new turns uh, for the threads, and then just back it out and try to clean it off as best as I can. It is gonna take some time, but have patience because it will be worth it.
Once that's done, bring it inside, clean it off very thoroughly with some warm, hot, soapy water. Make sure it's also really dry. You don't want a bunch of water mixing in with your oil when you put it back. Go ahead and put the clutch rings and the top plate back on there. And here's where I screwed up. So you'll see this little gap right in there. Uh, that's not supposed to be there. The top and the bottom pieces of metal are supposed to fit in with a groove. That piece and that piece are supposed to be more close together and there's supposed to be no space where those clutch rings interact with that top. So again, my fault, I talk about it in the end, I didn't realize I did it at the time, but if you're doing it your own, just kind of mesh it together until both that top and bottom uh, piece of metal fit in with each other, you'll hear it click. There's almost like little fingers and grooves. Now we're gonna put in our 80% stiffer springs from SMR. And on top, we're gonna set our Camara lifter plate. And I did purchase a whole new set of screws that are grade A quality, better than the stock screws. I had to buy the three anyway. I just went ahead and bought all six, so I know the screws are good and all brand new. So you'll have to push down the lifter plate a little bit, possibly, uh, to kind of condense some of those springs and just get these started. You're just wanting to thread the screw in just a couple of turns just to kind of hold it somewhat together before you put the clutch rings inside of the basket and then back on the bike. Make sure there's no debris anywhere before you sandwich these two together and you'll feel it kind of all rotate. Make sure all the clutch rings are all the same direction. They all have, if you're doing the stock rings, they have a blue tip and they follow the exact same pattern as when you took them out. Go ahead and grab the clutch basket and that whole bowl thing that we talked about. Put them together, put them back on the bike. You'll feel it interact with the other spindle and the gearing. The cool thing about the Camara lifter plate as well is you don't have to take it on or off to unscrew the clutch. You can actually fit that clutch and oil removal tool through it and actually get it all the way in and out. So go ahead and get that started and then go ahead and tighten these bolts. And again, there is a manufactured torque spec for everything, but uh, you guys know how I feel about those. Just start working these six screws down a little bit more. And then when you go to completely tighten them, they're going to hit resistance kind of immediately when the lifter plate hits the bottom of the clutch basket. And make sure that when you do that, you don't keep tightening. Just turn them just a smidgen more. You have the pressure of the springs pushing up on those screws as well. I highly doubt they're gonna go anywhere. And then I'm gonna use the impact driver to send the nut home for the clutch basket. Next, we're gonna put that oil spinner back on. Same deal with the oil spinner and clutch removal tool. Send her on home with the impact driver and then put those three screws with the top part back on it.
grab that bearing that you put in the freezer earlier and you'll see it probably still doesn't fit that good because this is a really high quality piece where everything is fit extremely well. So if you have a bearing seater, this is the time to use it. Or if you're a poor boy, just go ahead and use a socket that is roughly the same size and send it home gently with a rubber mallet. Now that we got that done, it's a good time to inspect the gasket of the cover. If you do need a new one, go ahead and put one on. I did not, even though I did order a new one just in case. Like I said, this bike is like 200 miles old, so nothing has had really that much time to break down. Go ahead and put the cover back on and put all your screws back in where they are supposed to go. And again, there is a torque spec for these. I'm sure there's a directional pattern to install these, but do as you want to with your own risk. This is just my install video. to put the oil dipstick back in and then readjust your clutch cable as well. We're done. That's it. Uh, you'll notice I'm in slightly different clothes and it's actually a new day because I had some stuff going on while I was doing this. I had to put a ham on the smoker, uh, do some other stuff with the family. So I never got to completely finish it because it took way longer than it was supposed to because like I showed you in the video where I messed up and didn't seat the clutch basket uh, together correctly with the plates and everything. <clears throat> because of that, the springs didn't do what they were supposed to do when the actual uh, clutch was supposed to be released and everything, or engaged rather, and I could not figure out for the life of me what was going on with it. It was pissing me off. I thought originally it was the Chimera um, lifter plate and I didn't do something right with that or maybe it was out of spec for some reason. I basically took the case off and played with the clutch and the clutch basket for maybe three or four different times, case on and off, just kind of dealing with it and troubleshooting and then I finally realized and something, it was one of those, you know, like, super simple easy mistakes that it's like a light bulb all of a sudden goes on and you see it and it's quick and easy to fix and you just wish you would have seen it earlier anyway i did fix it uh, got everything back on works great i will tell you um now this is going to be somewhat biased i guess because i do come from primarily shifting on a harley and the clutches are notoriously um especially the cable clutches are notoriously heavy on harley compared to sport bikes and street bikes and stuff so originally this grom had an incredibly easy clutch pull um you could do it with like your pinky finger um still i mean i could do it with a pinky finger but if you're comparing it to like a sport bike or whatever um definitely a little bit stronger of a clutch feel uh, harder to pull but still very easily doing uh doing it with two fingers especially if you're someone who uses a whole hand or a whole set of fingers like a whole grip to pull the clutch super easy you're not going to have any issue at least i don't think you're going to have any issue with this um in like traffic going in and out of first gear second gear and stuff like that um, what i will say is generally somebody who's going to do a modification like this uh, has some riding ability with them and has some riding experience so a heavier clutch pull is either going to be something that you are prepared to deal with because you definitely want the pros versus the cons of it having actually having a clutch that grabs especially for this grom or it's just going to be somebody that has enough of the uh, muscles in those two fingers and your wrist and your forearm and area that it's not going to bother you that much or you're just used to operating on heavier clutch pulls in general so really wouldn't worry about that if you're somebody that wants to do this um I would say you're probably okay. That being said, they make other different spring kits. 60%, uh, I think they make a 40 or a 30% also, but I went with 80 because I wanted to buy the spring kits one and done, probably in the next two or three hundred miles maybe for the Grom um, after I do some of the other stuff to it that I'm doing. 
that you'll have to make sure your post notifications are turned on and you have to subscribe to do that, so do that. But after I do a couple of those things and like I said, two, 300 maybe-ish more miles, I'll probably wind up getting a new uh, clutch ring set and putting in some, probably from the same brand, the uh, SMR probably do these same ones and that should really really help the clutch but you'll see that the seat is on i left this off because like i said i got some stuff coming up for the grom anyway but i did put the seat on took it out for a little bit of a test ride one to make sure everything worked two to see how the clutch was so i can tell you guys before the end of this video uh, how difficult it is to pull it in and actually use it um, and then three to just see how much more the clutch grabs and i could tell you that it grabs so much better it honestly feels like a like a different bike now um all the power granted it's not a lot of power <laughs> but all the power from the engine is actually transmitted to the actual driveline now. Um, like I said, I know that's gonna improve even more if I get some new clutch rings and the pads and everything. But for now, just with the, the stock clutch with the Grom and those 80% springs in that lifter, way better right off the bat. And it's a fairly cheap install. Um, all the links are in the description for all the products, but offhand, I believe it was like 40 or 45 bucks for the springs and maybe 50, 60, somewhere on there for the lifter plate. They make somewhat cheaper lifter plates. There was just a lot of good feedback for the Camaro one, so I wound up just go ahead and getting that. Uh, the tap, if you don't have it, super cheap as well, like 10 or 11 bucks. WD-40 is cheap. You don't even really have to use WD-40, use some oil or something like that just to make sure you lubricate it for cutting so you don't have completely bare metal. Definitely would recommend this if you're anybody with somewhat of a mechanical know-how and you could watch this video and follow steps pretty easy, I'd say go ahead and do it very easy, simple, fairly cheap, definitely a big improvement, especially if you're going down a size uh, tooth-wise for your sprocket in the front or up in the back and you're getting some more um, like felt torque through it definitely gonna need something like a stronger clutch or at least just uh, you know different springs like this video. That is my feedback on it. In a couple months or a year or two, whatever I got going on with it, I will let you guys know like I do with everything, how this is doing, how the clutch is going, and before that you'll probably see a video of a whole new clutch basket or at least the rings or whatever. We've reached the point of the video where it's pretty much done, but I talk about myself for a couple seconds. Obviously, I have this 2020 Honda Grom that I'm doing a bunch of stuff too. The video before this, I posted about all the stuff that I'm planning on doing to the Grom and my plans um, to make this, you know, what I wanna make this. So please make sure you watch that. I'll link it up here or whatever. I'll post it in the description as well, as long as I remember by the time I edited this. Uh, behind me, you can see obviously is a Harley. That is my 2020 Harley Davidson Lowrider S. I have a whole build series playlist devoted to that check out all of those videos, see what I got going on with that bike. Uh, if you don't know who I am, like I said, my name is Chris in the beginning. I believe I said Chris. Anyway, this is the Ride and Dad channel. I do have a bunch of uh, rides, reviews, build series, moto vlogs in general, just a bunch of motorcycle videos. I believe this is gonna either be like my 80th video or something like that. So as of now, we're still on a twice weekly upload schedule, Wednesday at noon and Saturday at 5 p.m. all Florida time. So please make sure you turn on your post notifications and you hit the subscribe button on my channel. And if you like this video or any other video you watch of mine, please do not forget and hit the like button and tell a friend or a family member about it. And I always welcome you guys in the comments as well. Uh, an easier way to contact me and have you know an actual conversation or if you have like a fairly in-depth question or whatever, if you go over to my Instagram page, uh, Ride and Dad, pretty easy to find. Um, not only do I post some, I think, pretty cool pictures, but also, that's the easiest way to send me a DM, uh, you know, slide into my DMs over there, but that's the easiest way to have an actual conversation with me. Um, one, it's private, not everybody is seeing what we're talking about, so you don't have to worry about maybe if you, I know sometimes a lot of people, especially new to stuff, they feel like their questions are dumb or they sound stupid or whatever. Um, I will never think your questions are dumb unless they're a legitimately stupid question that you're asking for no reason and is, is a very stupid question or I answered it before, but please, whatever it is, don't hesitate to ask me. I am all for helping the motorcycle community. That's how we learn. That's how I learned to do all this kind of stuff. Also. So I'll stop talking. One of these videos is going to be one that I just posted. The other one is one that YouTube thinks you're going to like. So watch one or both of those. And until the next time, guys, ride safe, have fun. Dad out.